obviously my son as well you know uh being at a growing up stage you feel like uh, you are absent uh, during uh, their you know this uh, childhood time and and i hope that they understand that uh, what we are doing is uh, something for the nation and for the country Malaysia is now ranked 10 most vaccinated country in the world. Isn't that amazing? Just a few months ago, Malaysia had one of the worst COVID-19 cases in Southeast Asia. I always wondered who are the people behind our vaccination program. As of now, 95% of Malaysian adults are fully vaccinated. I interviewed Inche Ridwan, who handles the manufacturing and packaging of vaccines across Malaysia. I want to find out what goes on behind the scenes and what he went through during the pandemic. Hi, I'm Muhammad Ridwan. I'm a registered pharmacist and a production manager of Pharmanaga Life Science in Ramba Hai where we are conducting the local fill and finish process for Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine. Very nice to meet you, uh, Inche Rizwan. So uh, can you just tell us a bit about your task, like what you do at the fill and finish plant in uh, Pharma Niaga? You know, I'm overseeing the entire production department. So that uh, encompasses the manufacturing and packaging sections as well. We have around 65 uh, personnel that uh, I'm overseeing. My overall role is to ensure that uh, the production operation runs uh, smoothly as uh, what we have set uh, in our schedules. For us to plan uh, properly, uh, okay. we need to have a very good level of understanding of all the process and all the components that uh, we are using and that we are consuming for this COVID-19 vaccine uh, from Sinovac. Can you tell me also like how did uh this started. I joined since February 2021. I was there when the first bulk of vaccine arrived to Malaysia in fact. At the time, I was uh, overseeing the sterile production at a sister site of Pharmaniaga, which is the Pharmaniaga Manufacturing Berhard. It was during this time that, uh, you know, the invitation came in. It all happened so sudden. It's a mix of excitement, a mix of, you know, nervous, I'm very much grateful for the entire opportunity for me to grow. Can you share with me like uh, some of the struggles that you and your colleagues face uh, during the pandemic? I think at earlier stages uh, as a group, I think everybody in Pharmaniaga Life Science, we were working around the clock. The responsibility that lies on your weight, it just starts to uh, weigh down on you. To have a continuous production non-stop for 24 hours, seven days a week, repeat that week after week, finding the right balance and formula in our manufacturing processes. This involves uh, sourcing the materials, components that we utilize during this process, securing that inventories from international vendors, it's also a, a struggle. I say that we have overcome. Would you say that people don't realize that if production is affected for one day, it really affects the progress of the people getting vaccinated, right? Having that thought not able to continue, also not having able to save the 80,000 lives uh, for the next day, uh, it was uh, really uh, dramatic and a very scary moment for me. The amount of effort that's needed to do this job, like how has this job affected your personal life? Understanding that when I undertook this uh, position and role, I uh, have committed to my responsibility as a medical professional. I had to, you know, really work around the clock, either coming in early and uh, staying back just to supervise, just to make sure that the processes are running smoothly. Obviously, it has compromised my time, especially with my wife. And... Obviously, my son as well, you know, uh, being at a growing up stage, you feel like uh, you are absent uh, during uh, their, you know, this uh, childhood time and and I hope that they understand that uh, what we are doing is uh, something for the nation and for the country. Can you tell me more about how, how hard is it for you not to be there for your son, right? I think over time, even my family, they understood yeah, you know, the responsibility uh, and they were adapting around my schedule. 
And so, you know, there will be little things that we manage uh, still to have and, uh, you know, enjoy as a family. And I really treasure that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't really take your time. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I rarely go down that deep, yeah, so... <laughs> oh, okay, okay. There were these days, you know, you go out in the morning and you come home and you realize you only have like a good hour or two to spend with your son because, uh, you know, his uh, sleeping time is uh, earlier. So I just take that two hours that I have uh, with them and uh, use it to the most. Relationship with your wife during that time because you weren't at home a lot. Did she share a lot of concerns about what was happening at home and you being away for a long time or something? Yeah, you know, so I think at the uh, early uh, stages when we were starting to run, we always, uh, you know, discuss and I always uh, remind her and explain to her what are our expectations. She has played a very crucial role uh, for me as a strong support, and uh, she has an uh, she has done an outstanding uh, job in ensuring that uh, you know uh, I am able to go in as a frontliner and perform my job uh, on day to day basis. And uh, I can't thank her enough for that. I, I imagine it must be very hard because like, you know, it wasn't just happening for like days or weeks, it was happening for months as well. It was happening yeah, for, for months, months Wei Shen. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. intense. It was an intense uh, campaign uh, duration. I think I'm speaking for the everyone in the Fomenaga group that, that, you know, had to go through a similar uh, situation and scenarios. This is where we feel like we have united, we have bonded stronger than ever. We feel like we are contributing our part to the nation. What role does the uh, vaccine play? For all the vaccines that are out in the markets today, I think there is a range of efficacy in prevention. There's always that last 10% or 20% that you may even contract the virus with the vaccine, but you have an 80% or 70% chance that you won't uh, even be infected at any point of time. This again uh, reiterate that point where the benefit outlies uh, the risk that uh, we have today. If you are contracted, there is also that uh, effectiveness for your body to fight off the COVID-19 virus. The booster shot, I think that there is a misconception that a lot of people are thinking that, uh, oh, this is your third dose like that, you know, like what, what do you have to say about it? We want to have a certain level of immunity uh, within uh, the community or within a country. So that's where the booster shot comes in. It will further reduce that uh, rate of transmission, curb down any uh, rise of a new variant. Uh, what would you say to those who are concerned that they should allow their children to uh, be vaccinated uh, at a, such a young age? I think if you are a parent, yeah. uh, you know, you would want to have your child or children to have somewhat of a normal life that we used to have uh, you know, pre-COVID days. And that's why the vaccine will help, you know, it will enhance the level of protection for them to have a somewhat a normal routine daily life. By seeing how our progress is right now and leading up to this, if you were to give a exact number of months or years, how long do you think it? I think even <laughs> if you ask at the top level of COVID-19 uh, virus management, they wouldn't have an answer for you. It all depends on that global uh, immunity level, whether or not we will be able to achieve uh, a level of immunity where we are able to remove our mask and uh, have a normal life. We are in progress and we need to keep going. We need to keep doing our part. Yeah. I guess in a nutshell, you know, the Malaysian way is to say, you wait and see lah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can say that. Yes, as Malaysians, we have to remain united and we have to remain uh, committed and we have to have that level of understanding that uh, we are all in this together. Just like, uh, you know, how we are in Pamanyaga, uh, we are a group of working individuals that are very committed, very united and very passionate 
about improving lives of the nation and of our communities. So the same message needs to be transcribed onto our public and onto our nation that you need to contribute to your part. And together, I hope that we can definitely overcome this and see a better day to this. Long story short, even though Malaysia is doing well, there are still a number of people who hasn't registered for the vaccine yet. So if you know anyone, please do encourage them to register for the vaccine now. If you guys have any ideas or personal stories that you would like to suggest, please let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe to us over here and follow our Instagram account at Says Videos over here. Look out for the next episode of Long Story Short. Bye!